In this video, I'm going to do more examples of how to use the substitution rule. I'm adding one new thing here. These are all definite integrals. Definite integrals have bounds, and the substitution rule can be used to change the bounds as well. So let me show you how that works. Here is an integral that looks promising for substitution rule. I have an inside function, x squared plus 1, and something that looks like its derivative. I'll choose u equals x squared plus 1 for the substitution. The du matches up with 2x dx using the derivative of x squared plus 1. But now I have to think about the bounds. The bounds are the edges in x, but how do they affect the new variable u? Well, I can use the substitution to figure out. If x equals 0, then u must be 0 squared plus 1, or 1. And if x equals 2, then u must be 2 squared plus 1, which is 5. So the new bounds will be 1 to 5. Then I can change the whole integral. The new bounds are 1 to 5, the 2x dx in the numerator becomes du, and the x squared plus 1 in the denominator becomes u, to make this an integral of 1 over u squared. I integrate this with the inverse power rule. The antiderivative is negative 1 over u, and I evaluate this on the bounds, being careful with the signs. The result is negative 1 fifth plus 1, which is 4 fifths. One of the nice things about substitution with definite integrals is that I don't have to reverse the substitution. By changing the bounds, I can just evaluate in the new variable with the new bounds. No need to switch back to x. Here is another example. I'll try the substitution u equals x cubed plus 1, which is the inside piece of the exponential. The derivative of this is 3x squared, so du is 3x squared dx. I divide this by 3. Since I can't have a 3 in the integral, to get 1 third du equals x squared dx. Then I change the bounds. When x is negative 1, u is negative 1 cubed plus 1, which is 0. When x is 2, u is 2 cubed plus 1, which is 9. The new bounds are 0 to 9. Then I can change everything in the integral. The new bounds are 0 to 9, the x cubed plus 1 in the exponent becomes u, and the x squared dx together are replaced by 1 third du. Then I pull the 1 third out of the integral. The antiderivative of e to the u is still e to the u, which I evaluate on the bounds, and the result is e to the 9 minus e to the 0, which is e to the 9 minus 1, all over 3. Again, no need to return to the original variable. I can finish the calculation in the new variable with the new bounds. Here is one more example. I'll try the substitution u equals cosine of x to make an easier denominator. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so du is negative sine x dx. I'll multiply both sides of this by negative 1 to get negative du equals sine x dx, and this matches the piece in the integral that I am trying to replace. Then I change the bounds. When x is 0, u is the cosine of 0, which is 1. When x is pi over 4, u is the cosine of pi over 4, which is 1 over root 2 according to a unit circle diagram. Then I change everything in the integral. The new bounds are 1 to 1 over root 2. The sine x dx is replaced with negative du. The cos cubed becomes u cubed in the denominator, and the result is a reverse power rule integral. The antiderivative of negative 1 over u cubed is 1 over 2 u squared. And finally, I evaluate on the bounds and simplify to get a result of 1 half.